Hello everybody! In this video I'm going to be showing how I use my favorite recording program Reaper to learn and practice songs. I'm a musician, I play drums, guitar, and bass, and this applies to any instrument, but I use the recording program to split the song into chunks that I can go back and loop later so that I can practice or remember how songs go. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to import an audio file into Reaper. We're going to split that song into chunks or what I call riffs. We're going to create some custom actions within Reaper. Uh, this is going to make things easier for us. And then finally we're going to assign hotkeys so that we can jump between these different chunks or riffs that we've split up. Okay, let's start with importing the audio file. Uh, I'm going to be learning a metal song here. We're going to pick a Kill Switch Engage song. And for this tutorial, we're going to be using the song Take This Oath. So all I've done is dragged and dropped an audio file into Reaper. And you can see that it created a track for that audio file. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to split the song into riffs or the parts that we want to learn. All right, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the S hotkey to split the song up. And I need to make sure I turn off snapping to do this so that I'm not stuck to the grid inside a Reaper. So all I have to do is position the play cursor at the beginning or end of a riff. Now I'm going to use the space bar to start playing this. Now it does seem I'm right at the beginning of the riff. I'm going to hit the S hotkey and you can see I made a split here at the beginning of this riff. Now I'm using the down arrow to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and play again and go to the end of this riff that I want to learn. Okay, now I hit the enter key. When I hit the enter key, you can see the play cursor stopped. If I would have hit the space bar key again, it would have bounced back to the beginning of where the play cursor was before. Now I need to make sure that the play cursor is right at the end of the riff. Okay, now I can nudge using the left and right arrows on the keyboard to the very beginning of the next riff. Okay, so I'm going to nudge and you hit the space bar to make sure I'm right at the beginning at the end of the riff, or sorry, right at the end of the riff or beginning of the next riff. So I'm going to hit the space bar again. Okay, I need to nudge back a little bit so I can hear the kick drum. Okay, that's right there, so I'm going to hit S to split that up. Now I've got my first riff. Let me zoom out a little bit and you can see what I've done here. You can see I've split this little part off here. So I've split that out. Okay, let me go ahead and fast forward to another part of the song. Okay, here's the next riff that I want to learn, spacebar. Okay, I need to nudge over a little bit to get right at the beginning. All right, enter key. All right, I split that again. I've got another riff split off. All right, let me do one more riff just for this demonstration. Okay, here's the next riff that I want to learn. All right, I'm nudging over, zoom in with the up arrow. All right, split that and go to the, the end of that. Right, enter key. Nudging with left and right. All 
All right, split it there. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here now. I've got to zoom out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of the song here. All right, now I've gone ahead and deleted the rest of the song. I'm just left with my three riffs here. All right, that's the three riffs that I want to learn. I'm going to turn snapping back on. I said that we're also going to create some custom actions. That's going to turn each one of these riffs into a time selection up here. Let me go ahead and show you the actions that I'm using. The first one I called create tempo markers for a riff. You can go ahead and create this inside of Reaper yourself. Right, it's going to set a time selection and then create a measure from that time selection. Uh, I've given that a keyboard shortcut. You can make it whatever you want. Then I create another custom action called select next riff. All right, it's going to move between items on a track. Select the time on that item and then start the play from the transport. I gave that a keyboard shortcut as well. You can give that whatever you want and you'll be using these for yourself later. And also a keyboard shortcut to move backwards in riffs. Alright, so that's selecting the previous item in a track. Set the time selection to that item and then go ahead and start the play from the transport. Okay, so you'll create those three actions yourself inside of Reaper and give them whatever shortcuts you want. These are the shortcuts that I've used. All right, so now, like I said, we turn snapping back on. I'm going to go ahead and select this first item, zoom in a little bit with the up arrow. Uh, I'm going to go to Actions, all right, and I'm going to do that Create Tempo Markers for Riff action that I created. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Next time, I'll use a keyboard shortcut. But notice what happens. We got this time selection and tempo markers up here. Okay, now what I want to do is go ahead and slide the other riff right next to that one. With it selected, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut now, and you'll see I get two more tempo markers up here. All right, just one more to do. I'm only using three riffs for this demonstration. I've got it selected. All right. Now the reason we want tempo markers there is so that we can turn on the metronome or program drums along to this, to this music. Now, let me show you what you can do with this using those keyboard shortcuts that I created. Watch what I can do. I can jump to another riff. It's going to go ahead and loop once it gets to the end. That's good for musicians that just want to learn this one part. Okay, and now I hit that keyboard shortcut to advance to the next riff. And it's just bouncing to the next riff. It's going to loop that one. So you can see how this could be useful as a learning tool. All right, and now I can bounce freely in between these different riffs. Now let me show you what this looks like once you get a bunch of riffs into one project. And you can save these so that you can go back and remember the riffs that you've learned so far. All right, I've loaded up a project where I was already learning some stuff. Now if I go ahead and use those hotkeys, it's going to bounce in between my riffs. Now if you wanted to slow this down, you can go right down here to the play rate, right click it, tell it to preserve pitch in audio items, and you can go ahead and slow down the play rate to something slower or faster. Okay, so there's how you can slow things down to make things easier to learn, and you can bounce between riffs again using those keyboard shortcuts. All right, that's all I've got for you in this video. Hopefully that was helpful to you, and you're able to use that to learn some stuff. Now get out there and learn some music.